So um, we have a bunch of questions that we want to answer for you guys. And before we do that, we want to go after one thing. We want to give you a little mindset motivation boost today. So tell me your favorite thing for boosting mindset and motivation. Well, I always think it's about abundance, not mm -hmm. deprivation. That when I do the right thing, actually in our Brain Fed Life community, I was talking to someone this week who um, is like, oh, I miss the pizza and I miss the cake and the potato chips are calling my name. And I wrote back to her and it's like, did you date the bad boys <laughs> in that. high school? Uh, because she's actually missing something that is beating her up. Right. So and I often think of it like um, when, I, when I'm talking to people, I'm like, okay, so if you were dating someone who was beating the hell out of you, okay, if they were totally abusive, are you going to tolerate that? Because that's but, really but what it's like. a lot of people like. do because they're addicted right. to that because they're afraid of what else might, you know, you know, what's life like right. without that abusive person or what's life like without potato chips. Uh, but it's not loving you back. It's, yeah. You only want to be in a relationship with someone or something that loves you back. Right. So I, I like to say, I'm going to eat things that give me an abundance of health and energy and memory. Um, and I'm going to avoid things that right. give me illness. And, you know, I'm grateful to be with a partner who loves me back. And uh, that's the... Well, you're nice to my kid. How can I not? <laughs> So, um, so that's our little boost for motivation today. We want to jump in and answer some of your questions. So we make sure we cover some of these. You've sent in a whole bunch of good ones. Make sure you keep them coming. And we're, we're categorizing these together so we can get as many in as we can. A lot of them were about pain related, um, like pain related with nutrition. So rheumatoid arthritis, chronic pain, joint pain, and fibromyalgia. And those are all sort of categorized together, even though you might not think they are, they are. So a lot of them were, what do I do for nutrition related to those things? Fibromyalgia, chronic pain, joint pain. Um, and they're, they're, they're very similar. So basically, um, you want to do anything to decrease inflammation. That's why our program is an anti-inflammatory program because anything you're doing that's increasing inflammation is going to make all of those issues worse. So we have dozens of stories of people talking about getting off their medication even long term. Their pain medication. Right, because in fibromyalgia and things like that because they decrease the inflammation so much. And this is really odd. I don't have those issues, but I practice martial arts and you know, we really work on flexibility a lot. I notice that when I do anything that increases inflammation, I'm not as flexible. So my joints really feel it. So what are foods that increase inflammation? Sugar, dairy, gluten. So we want to put you on corn, corn, soy. Well, soy, if you're having the processed soy, like the soy oils, the inflammatory omega-6 fatty acids when they're out of balance with the omega-3s. So it's all the additives, right? The processed foods. So to keep your and inflammation down. red dye can be pro-inflammatory. I showed Tana this week. We did a scan. Uh, a kid who is struggling with uh, temper and irritability, mm -hmm. uh, ticks even. And so we scanned him and then we gave him red dye number 40 and scanned him again. And his brain looked like someone just lit off a bomb yeah. in his brain. It just became highly inflamed. Right. So what you eat really matters. And then just some tips to decrease uh, pain, omega-3 fatty acids. I use those a lot with our NFL players and Sam E, mm -hmm. uh, S adenosyl methionine, one of the supplements that we use that helps with both pain and mood. And starting your morning with a cup of warm lemon water can really help too, just to get things going and it's, it's anti-inflammatory. So that's, that's that. Someone else asked me what kind of magnesium is best. Well, it depends on best for what. Okay, so for sleep, like at night, um, I take magnesium glycinate. So a chelated form of magnesium, magnesium glycinate is really helpful for settling you down. 
For working out, I like magnesium torate or magnesium malate, which is really good for like heart function. Um, you know, just a general magnesium, all around magnesium citrate can be okay. You can't really overdose on magnesium. Well, if you do, you'll know it. Loose stools, but you're not gonna, it's Someone for most else people, will know it too. right. Um, but, but that's really the worst thing that will happen. So it really depends on what for, but for settling you down, um, anxiety, you know, helping you to uh, calm down so you can go to sleep. Usually it's magnesium glycinate, and that's usually in the evening. And, and almost all of us should be taking magnesium because 80% of the population is low in magnesium. Yeah. So I just take 200 milligrams every day just to be safe. Yeah. So um, the next one is, let's see, organic honey. How do we feel about organic honey? So let's just... Um, say it this way a sugar is a sugar is a sugar they're all sugars okay is organic honey better for you in the sense that it has slightly better you know other health benefits and it's organic yeah that part of it's okay it still spikes blood sugar so any sugar or anything that spikes blood sugar is going to cause an insulin release that's where the issue comes in with sugar so think there's of them. a reason that winnie the pooh is fat right Sorry. So, but not just maybe diabetic too. So we want to um, we want to call it what it is. So, do I use any honey? I do use a little bit of honey, but be honest with yourself. People who think that like consuming honey every day is fine just because it's organic, it's not true. Okay, yeah. so, so the amount matters. The uh, amount matters and how often matters. So occasionally in some of the recipes that I have, you know, small. When I say small amounts, I mean like a couple tablespoons for an entire recipe. That's about what we will keep it down to. Maple syrup, same thing. Anything that raises blood sugar. It's about raising blood sugar, not whether or not it's organic. Hopefully that's clear. Um, lime and the brain. That's a good one. So oh, we just did a big post on that. Uh, very important. Yeah. So you can read about that at amenclinics.com. Uh, and it's like, why does the psychiatrist care about lime? It's an because infectious it's a disease. Really important. Because when we started looking at people's brains, you know, their brains would look toxic or inflamed and they weren't drinking. And, you know, when we would work them up, we'd find a very high percentage of our patients have Lyme disease. Uh, some of them, uh, I mean, it would just devastate their lives. And one of my favorite stories, uh, Adriana, um, really was a normal, wonderful kid until she was 16 and then she got bit by a deer tick and ended up yeah. become psychotic in uh, the hospital and getting her Lyme treated, she actually got her so life couple back things. and she's just getting ready to graduate from Pepperdine. I'm so proud of her. I mean, think about how sad that is. Your child, you don't know if they have Lyme, but they're being treated for psychosis and put into a hospital and taken out of school. That's a big deal. Couple things to know about Lyme. It's sexually transmitted also, people don't know that. Brand new, yeah, we just yeah, found big that big deal, out. it's a spirochete, just like syphilis. So also, we've got two doctors that um, one treats the, the effects of Lyme and the other one actually treats Lyme itself. So important to know, because it's so important for the brain and that's why we're really focused on it. Well, and talking of psychosis, brand new article out just this week that in a child, gluten uh, caused psychosis. Mm -hmm. So if their psychosis, uh, in you or someone you love, I mean, one of the first things to do is get your diet Elimination right. diet. Uh, estimated about 4% of people with schizophrenia have gluten sensitivity that may be contributing to their psychosis. So we think the diet we recommend is just good for everybody. Well, even more important if you're really struggling with uh, a issues. mental illness or a brain Well, health and I'm speaking at ACO um, this month. What and is that? What is that? So it's, it's, a, it's a big ADD conference in Atlanta. And so- um, ADD coaching organization. Right, so it's a big ADD conference. And one of the things, one of the studies that I'm, I'm actually presenting in my presentation, they actually, now there's a study that shows that about 15% of people with ADD do much worse. They actually, their symptoms get worse with gluten and by, um, they suggest doing an elimination diet to see because about 15% of people well, get much better. Let's just be really clear. You know, when we say an elimination diet, people go, oh, that's hard. It's like, I always want you to eliminate those things that could hurt you. So this is basically how Tan and I live all the time. I mean, we're not perfect, but we're really good. Well, so it's basically eliminate the things that could hurt you and eat the things that are likely to help you. So one of the things we want you to stop thinking about is um, 
elimination versus um, we're going to be replacing those things. All the things so you get to eat. really quick before we run out of time, I want to make sure we get another question. And one of them was fibromyalgia and vegetarian. So this person wants to, to do our program, but she's like, I can't eat anything because I'm a vegetarian. It's not really true. She was wondering what she can use as, as protein sources. Um, so our um, protein powder is actually a great source of protein for, for vegans and vegetarians. It's got fiber in it. It has um, all the amino acids. It has digestive enzymes. It's a wonderful source, replacement source for vegans and vegetarians. This person is a vegetarian, not a vegan, so I'm assuming she eats eggs. That's a really good source of protein. Also, organic tofu. And she was telling me she eats seitan. That's full of gluten. So not seitan. Go for seitan. Seitan. Like right. I'll just let's just say it that way. But <laughs> anyways. Um, so organic tofu, and that should really be enough um, to be able to supplement your program. That with along, if you're if you're eating our program, you're getting a lot of um, protein in your plant-based foods, anyways. So that should be enough. Um, and really quickly, difference between xylitol and erythritol. People are wondering why I recommend erythritol. Xylitol is not of the devil. Okay, it's it's not. But there's a reason we recommend erythritol for people who can use it. In fact, in commercial products, you're going to find xylitol instead of erythritol most of the time. That's because it is more affordable, number one. And number two, like in almost all chewing gums, um, xylitol helps prevent cavities. Okay, so that's why xylitol is used more often. But erythritol, it's a little more expensive, but it's easier to digest. So people who have IBS, Crohn's disease, things like that, um, ulcerative colitis, a lot of times your doctor will tell you not to use any sugar alcohols. But they're not the same. Erythritol doesn't digest the same as um, xylitol or malitol. Malitol being the worst of them will cause severe um, digestive issues a lot of the times. Don't use it, especially if you're going on a hot date. Um, so a lot of bloating, gas, diarrhea. Um, so anyways, they digest differently. So um, xylitol and malitol actually digest differently than erythritol. Erythritol digests in a way that it doesn't cause the same problems. I'm not going to get deep into it because we don't have time. So the first time I saw Sugar Free and it was just loaded with oh, malitol, no. I thought, <laughs> it's free. I could eat all that I, I want. I think I remember and that. And ate like the whole bag. I think I remember no it. no one could be around me <laughs> ever. It was So disgusting. I think we had to like remove anything flammable. <laughs> so anyways, don't do that. Um, Erythritol actually tastes better than stevia, xylitol, all of them. So it's one of, one of my favorites. So, and it doesn't cause people to avoid me. Okay, last question, because I think it's the last one we have time for right now, was again about Effexor. Second one about Effexor. This person's really concerned about his mother being on Effexor um, once or off of it because he's afraid of the long-term effects on her heart and her health. Yeah, you also have to be afraid of the long-term effects of untreated depression. So right. if it really works, um, the problem with Effexor is it can raise people's blood pressure. About 20% of people get an increase in blood pressure. So you want to watch that. But if that's not the issue, and if you're concerned about her heart get an EKG you know have the doctor just order an EKG to make sure it's okay you know always with medication you want to understand well what's the side effect of medication but you also want to ask yourself what's the side effect of not being treated right. because untreated depression is awful for your heart for your relationships, for your sense of joy and meaning and purpose. Now, we have lots of natural ways that we help with depression, but Effexor is actually one of my favorite medications when it's targeted to the right brain type. Speaking of brain types, you can go take our brain health assessment on amenclinics.com. It's free. It'll tell you about the health of your brain plus your brain type and give you suggestions on how to optimize it. Thanks. Love you guys. Bye.